Hi everyone, this is Leslie Jufless with Trading Live Online, and I apologize for the first send on uh, the weekly market setups this weekend. Uh, the audio wasn't working on that recording as I received an email from some of you. So first of all, thank you for giving me a heads up on that. Okay, so <clears throat> this is take two on this. So what I'd like to start with today um, is we're going to look at the sector summary and I just want to show you fairly quickly how I use this because sometimes we have days where the market is having a strong move to the downside or it's having a strong move to the upside and so on the stock charts on the uh, dashboard what I do is I uh, look at the Dow Jones and this is an easy one to just go to percent down uh, and you can see how many are negative, percent up, how many are up, and then the most active. And you'll see, you know, there's a little bit of a mix here. But if the day is a very, very strong down day, then even the percent up may not show any green at all. It might just be showing you in order um, the least weak, weakest stocks. Um, so that can also help you with direction of the market, especially if you're an intraday trader. Another thing I like to look at, <clears throat> excuse me, when there is a strong down day or up day, uh, sometimes during the day, I like to take a look at the sector summary. So this list gives all the um, sectors of the S&P. And if it's a strong down day, and maybe there's a sector that's still hanging in there on the green side, or maybe of uh, the one at the top of the list that is the least weakest on a strong down day, might want to be looking at that for when the market is ready to turn. So even if we have, if we're in a, say, a bear market, which we're not in a bear market right now, um, but if we were in a bear market and then you're, you're tracking things that are giving you indications the market's getting ready to make a turn, then you can kind of uh, have some of these things in advance, be tracking who was the strongest. And uh, so from there, you can also go to, right up here, you can go to all US industries. So this is gonna give you a list of all the industries. You can see this quite a big list down here. And again, uh, just the way it comes up like this ranks them in order from the strongest to the weakest. If you uh, check the scooter right here, then that's going to rank them in the individual industries and which ones are the strongest. So the highest number is going to be the strongest and then they go uh, down from there. So uh, you can track all kinds of things by just taking you know a quick look at some of these things. But uh, when you get in here, if you've got stock charts or whatever program you have, you probably have something similar to this. So you just have to kind of figure out how to do the same thing. It shouldn't be hard. But if we click on the internet, just as an example, that is going to give us a lot of individual stocks. And again, the ranking is the same. It's going to rank the strongest at the top and the weakest at the bottom. But if you want to see what the kind of relative strength is, then you click that. This is in stock charts, and I'm sure other trading platforms are going to have this, or um, charting platforms will have a similar. Uh, but from there, you'll see the individual stock. So it's not necessarily going to be in that same ranking order that first first comes up. Now, one of the reasons I um, wanted to just discuss that a little bit today uh, in this video is because I recently did the segment for your daily five earlier this week. And I was talking about a seasonal tendency for small cap stocks to rally towards the end of the year. And there's also a seasonality for stocks in general to decline starting somewhere around now, into September, sometimes into October. But many, many times the end of October, November, and into December are stronger months. And um, the small caps have 
a seasonal tendency to be up in the months of October, November, December, and sometimes into January of the uh, of the next year. So that uh, list, the kind of listings I just showed you, you can do a little bit of homework and go find and rank uh, some of the stocks that are in the Russell 2000. So you have plenty of time now to do a little bit of homework <laughs> on that and kind of make a watch list for yourself. Now, the other thing I wanted to point out uh, with the, I, I'm going to talk about the IWM, uh, is that there is a big range in in the IWM as we can see on the chart. You can see up here there was a range, small range, it dropped. And ever since uh, June of 2022 or so, even a little bit before, this um, symbol has been forming a large range. So what we know about ranges like that is that eventually they're going to come out of those ranges and there's generally going to be a strong move. We want to keep in mind that there's different outcomes uh, with range breakouts. They don't always break out just in one direction and go. They, they can give traders quite a headache because they can have false breakouts. Uh, and this is something I've talked uh, about before. They can have false breakouts. They can break out, come back up into the range. They can have a breakout falls, come back in, go out the other end of the range. Um, they can come out one end, turn around, go out the other end, and both ends fail, and they come back into the range. So, which just means usually you're going to have to adjust, uh, probably trend line support resistance, and just know and have faith that when that move is real, it's going to be likely a strong move. So you have to also kind of uh, work on your mindset uh, for those and not give up because those, the breakout moves do uh, tend to kind of exhaust traders. And then that real move happens and they're not in anymore because they took a couple losses and they're tired of it. Um, so, but just keep that in mind. So if we're looking at a seasonal pattern in IWM, anywhere around, you know, it can start any any time. Um, I think the the uh, largest months were around November and December, but maybe, you know, identifying some of the stocks that you uh, may want to, or ETFs uh, that you may want to participate in, that would be a good time to start sorting those out and realize that IWM is in this big prolonged range now. So the, uh, the, Russell 2000, and I mentioned this in the Your Daily Five video, like a bellwether for the U.S. Uh, economy is when a lot of the small caps are based in the United States, and they're the ones that are doing a lot of the producing and manufacturing uh, as the economy starts to get get moving. So definitely want to be keeping an eye on on this symbol. Now, one of the other topics I wanted to talk about today on this video is a little bit more on the tutorial side, uh, but it also ties in with the analysis we want to be looking at this week. So I'm going to take the NASDAQ right now as an example. We'll look at an example on the SPY and the S&P 500 futures as well. So it was a couple to a few weeks ago, I sent out an email that sent an alert on a butterfly sell pattern on the, on the NASDAQ. And I can tell you where, just about where that was. I can go look up the date, but I can do it this way too. Because if we just take the X to A and the 127, I remember that the price had not reached that 127 yet. So we were back probably around the mid part of July when I sent that out. One thing that I wanted to really discuss with you about butterfly patterns is these are contrarian patterns. If all of you just take a few minutes and think back to this period on how what the bullish sentiment was out there, it's pretty high bullish sentiment. And that's when these patterns tend to start forming and appearing. Sometimes uh, we don't see just one pattern form. Sometimes there'll be a series before the market does do a turn. 
And these things are very important to study. Um, make a, a folder on your computer and take examples of any patterns that you're studying, whether it's butterfly patterns, uh, the Gartley, ABCD pattern, three drive, triangles, um, you know, blue moon patterns, whatever it is, you should be studying everything that you can about those patterns. Um, the outcomes, what are the variations on outcomes of the patterns? This is really going to help you in, um, you know, different market environments. And that's also another thing in different market environments, um, there's different uh, variations that can happen with these with these patterns. So it depends on where these patterns appear. And so you've got to do a little bit of work. So as an example, this particular butterfly pattern. So here's the 127. You can see that right here. We notice it went right up through it, went right to the 1618. And look at that. It only got a small amount, you know, tradable on a very short term basis. You make a little bit on that 1618, probably lost a little bit on the 127, but it wasn't until it reached up to the 2.0 and the 0.886, our last chance uh, Fib ratio, uh, that the market then started to turn down. So um, a lot of people that receive that email, I know just from experience, are like, oh, geez, that didn't work. Well, let's define what you mean by works. Um, so I think the example I just gave you uh, might be illustrating that. So sometimes you have to stay with stay with the trade, understand that there's different ratios uh, with this pattern and other patterns and understand your market conditions. So generally when butterfly patterns are forming like at you know highs, like here, we're coming back up, retracing all the way to that 886. Um, the market started rallying in October. You know, not quite a full year, but that's a pretty, pretty impressive and also extended uh, rally to the upside. So it's, um, it's not. Um, it, it, that would I think place more importance on seeing this pattern versus when this rally starts, let's just say that this right here, this is almost a butterfly pattern that we're going to say, we're just going to say it is for our sake of example, even though that the C would be, well, I guess it is, it's about a 1.0, so we'll go with it. So here's the 127. So look at this, we have a new trend to the upside. So the butterfly pattern forms and look what happens. Not much. And you even get an ABCD buy pattern, which is you know, the better direction in this case to go. So this is what I mean by studying these, um, these patterns. Now let's look at something else with these patterns. Okay, now I'm looking at the SPY, SPY, a 60 minute chart. And as many, many of you know from reading Trade What You See or some of you that have studied with me, we talk about, or just some of the courses that I have on the website, um, talk about warning signs, gaps, long range bars, this and that. But in, if you remember from the materials you studied um, that the gaps and long bars don't always mean that you completely 100% pass on the trade. Sometimes you do, but other times, such as the case that I just showed you on the NASDAQ, if we scale down on that, there'll probably be some gaps uh, in there as well. But you're taking into consideration where that butterfly pattern is. So in the case of that NASDAQ, it was up at an 886 retracement. We're looking back into 2021-22. We can see resistance up at that level, et cetera. So that gives it a different dynamic than if a market is, again, starting a new trend to the upside and you see a butterfly pattern, you know, um, uh, form uh, very soon out of a breakout uh, pattern. So two different types of market 
market uh, structures and conditions. So on this one, on the SPY, now the SPY we don't get the Globex data on, so we're going to see more gaps on the SPY than in the futures we get the overnight data. So that makes a difference in our analysis as well. So we don't necessarily want to just be throwing these out and, and passing, passing them up. So here we can see some gaps um, you know, here this would be X, A, B, C, D up. And you can see that didn't really get much. Let me go ahead and put that in. And that happens sometimes before you get the one that does go. So where's the 127? That would be right about here, wouldn't it? There it is. So you can see you had a gap here to the upside and just a little bit of a retracement down. Now, if you're trading that, and you're in the, remember how I just showed you on stock charts, you can go in and you can go look for, is, is it all green? Is it all red? Is it mixed? Well, let's say you get this and it's like just all green. You can't even find any red on it. Well, you want to manage that probably accordingly. But keep in mind that often we see series of butterfly patterns on their way you know, up or down to a major support or resistance area, some sort of turning point. And again, the market had been rallying for a long time. The sentiment was getting to be extreme on the greed side. So here, another little butterfly pattern forms right there. Let me draw it in on the 60 minute chart. Oh, that's not exact, but we're just gonna go with it this time because there we go. There's the 127. So here you see over here, you can see where, see if I can squish this up enough to find. Oop, that's not going. Hang on just a sec. Let's see if I can. I don't know why that's not going all the way over. Let's try refresh. Let's see if that helps. All right, that helped. But still not. That's strange. I'm getting things that are. All right, let's do it this way. Okay, here's a spy daily chart. So we're just looking at the 60 minute. And so right back. Oh, let's see. Let me take this off. There we go. So right back. So here we have, you see how this is coming up to the upside here. That's not, it's kind of a, kind of sort of, but not quite a butterfly. This is exceeding the X point, but uh, we can use like an A, B, C, D here. And again, notice that the D 1.0, notice how there's hardly any reaction there. Okay. But look, we still have some more levels to be uh, watching on the upside. And uh, the 127 gets a little bit more kind of test back down towards the 1.0. Then it gets up to the 1618. And if we look here across, look at all this resistance, these resistance areas back here, break here, gaps here that the market is getting back up to. So we're putting that into a different context. Now, right back up in this section, the 60 minute that we were looking at, that's where that little butterfly pattern formed. So even though we were seeing, let's try this again. Even though we were seeing some gaps in this, we're putting it into context of where this is and also taking into consideration that we don't have Globex data on this. So this is going to be a, a the technical term gapier chart. Now, the next thing to notice about this so is here, it gets up um, there and then you see this nice move based off a of butterfly cell pattern to the downside off of that pattern, find support right there. Now we have another gap to the upside. However, what happens after that, and this is why I think it's important and to learn market structure or patterns. Um, a lot of you guys got the um, harmonic patterns plus the classical technical analysis. And I think that's a good way to start really putting those two uh, methods of analysis together. So you have this fall here, so this gap to the upside. If the market is still really, really bullish, then this price should be heading up to this high and exceeding it on its way up to the next level or maybe new 
all-time highs. But this is a clue right here that the market got really slammed to the downside. Next clue comes with a gap up. Then the market fills a range. Then you see this gap to the downside. So this is all bearish action in here. Now you start to see ABCD sell patterns. Here's one here that's re retesting this level in here. And then you start to see you know, another gap to the downside. Get another ABCD. Here, we're gonna look at this on the futures chart as well. Notice how this one extends. You have a bit of a long bar to the upside, extends to the 1618. They only have one, two, three bars in the AB leg. So two bars here is not, you know, it's not extremely asymmetrical. But in, when you're getting into corrections to the downside, the rallies can be very sharp and uh, they can fool a lot of people and then the price suddenly turns. So if you're doing your analysis and you're looking at this and you're saying, I'm really seeing more bearish than bullish uh, on that, then you can put this kind of thing into a different context. Okay, so then uh, let's look at the futures chart. Okay, lots of old lines back here. So let's just ignore all this, except we would, if we got a really big move to the downside, we would wanna pay attention to this number right here. That was the previous um, level in the market from an FOMC meeting. But anyway, we'll talk about that if that happens. So here, here's the, on the futures chart. So um, this is the uh, daily. Uh, so we see this ABCD ending swing, kind of a B fly here. It's about a one, you know, these are about the same price here, uh, and this would be a 2.0 extension up. But if we're using the CD leg, you can see the 1618 was right up against that 886. Again, our you know last chance Fib ratio. Notice how the spy did not get quite to that 886. Sometimes the spy and the S&P 500, even though they're they're likely moving the same direction they may have different retracements uh, with them. I think it's a good idea to look at both uh, of them. Uh, if you're trading the SPY, and you know one example that would be of a benefit is if the SPY, like we just saw, only retraces to about here. But if you can check the S&P, and you see the S&P is at that 886, and the SPY is starting to turn, and this is starting to turn, then that might give you a cue uh, into a potential setup. And that would be the same thing at lows. Right, so on, on here, we see this A, B, C, D, kind of this extension, two point up, 1618, market. In the 60 minute, we had a little B fly, butterfly sell in here. And here you can see the market starts to go sideways. Notice the opens and closes around the same area. And we start to get narrowing of ranges and then a gap to the gap to the downside. So I hope you find that helpful in putting this in uh, context of where you are in market, market structure. If you do not have the um, the course, uh, the Trading Mastery course, which is a series of the six workshops and lots of different great topics in that, you know, just check it out on the website. It's very reasonably priced. Uh, it's the Trading Mastery Harmonic Patterns plus Classical Technical Analysis. And I know you'll get a lot out of it. Okay, now let's do a little bit of work on the 20,000 tick chart on the S&P 500. So we looked at the 60 minute, we know what that looks like. Um, we just did some analysis on that. However, on the tick chart, the 20,000 tick chart, you can use a little bit longer. If you wanna use like 30,000, you should be able to get that. If you don't have tick charts, you can use the Globex data. Um, tick charts are created um, differently than regular uh, bar charts. Bar charts are based on time and these are based on ticks, the number of ticks that it takes to form one bar. So one bar on this chart takes 20,000 ticks. Depending on the volatility um, in the market, which right now there's you know some volatility to the downside, it's not huge. Uh, so this would probably equate to maybe a 15 to 30 minute chart. Um, you know, maybe 
maybe 60, but remember, we're looking at all the Globex data on here. So we're looking at a lot more swings on here. So which can always give us a little bit more information. And we, sometimes we can see patterns on the tick charts that we don't see on the regular bar charts and vice versa. So this is why I like to uh, use both. So on the tick chart, there was a head and shoulder pattern, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. Here's the, the uh, height of the pattern projected to the downside. So another thing to think about with this is, again, this is turning into more of a tutorial weekly setups, but I hope you, again, hope you get a lot out of it. So here we've got um, the market breaks Here's the support level. Here's the target and see how it comes down. Here's the ABCD that's always, always part of a head and shoulder pattern, either topping or a bottom inversing. So, um, you know, you have to make your decisions about how or if and how you you trade these. Uh, personally, for me, I, I tend to stay away from them. Um, I'm, if I'm doing, you know, to the downside, that's a break, and there's a larger measured move that's for me probably going to be a better thing to go for. But you have to make you know your own decisions and studies on it. So notice how right here, notice how it only gets about three quarters of the way to the target, and then it forms an A B C D cell pattern. See how it retests that neckline, the breakout, the support that broke, that's now resistance. See how it tests that and then comes down again and now it's about seven eighths of the way down. Still doesn't quite get there. Now the rally to the upside. These are about the same length swings. And then it down again. Ah, now it gets there. So you have to think about your trade management. I mean, can you really sit through that, um, that's a lot of, you know, that's a lot of up and down. And I, I think you're going to need a said Dramamine to do that. So think about your trade management on things like that. The shorter the time frame, the more you're going to get, you know, more, more swings are going to occur. Okay, right, so from here, we saw um, the market sort of ratchet to the downside, found some support, rally up another ABCD sell, made a bit of a low. On Friday, see the butterfly buy pattern right here. I will draw it in for you here and here. So that was also coming into this 127 swing. And this was also, I don't have it on this chart, but it was also a 618 retracement if we go back to the 60 minute chart, but I'll let you guys find that. So we had a number of ratios coming in here. Market had a, you know, you know, good rally off of it, and then spent a lot of the day Friday just going uh, sideways, back and forth, and forming sort of a smaller range. But if um, the market from here, if it just continues, you know, up this way, then we might see another ABCD sell pattern. And don't forget, you know, there might be a 127 or 1618 extension on that C to D leg. Uh, but let's look for the resistance areas if that occurs. If this just continues to go sideways more, I would just negate that for now because that's probably going to be too much sideways in the B to C leg. If it turns and goes to the downside from here, then let me get, we can look at maybe a retracement here. It would be down around maybe the 786. This is a previous area. The market, uh, I can tell from the dash line there, uh, had some a lot of trading around to the upside. So it might be some support down around there or this 886 level, and then maybe another rally back up. But for now, this is the resistance area. This is a big resistance area. And of course, here and here are big resistance areas. And again, we are getting into a bit of a seasonal time frame for the market to uh, do some corrections. So the 60 minute chart, we can come back to that. And we can see where some of the gap areas. So we want to be marking those in as potential uh, support levels as, as well. If you notice here, this swing, this is the 618 I was talking about low. 
to high. And see how different that is on the regular session from the tick tick chart. So I'm getting you know a lot of information from having a couple different views. So this uh, support was found on Friday at this 618. Uh, but we also, if the market declines more over the next couple to few weeks, there's a gap area down here, the 127 from this low to high. And then if we come back and look out a little farther, we can see this previous 4200 level. That's going to be a really important support level. Okay. All right. Let's take a quick look at the NASDAQ and the Dow. Okay, so the, the Dow using the YM, which is the futures contract, here's the um, previous highs back here. And it had been in this range, inverse head and shoulder here. Here's the measured target up here. And since this breakout, it came up to the 886 last chance fib uh, ratio and has backed off and is kind of holding support at that previous 786. But this breakout area, and since there is a identifiable pattern, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, we certainly don't want to see price before it gets here coming back down like below this low. That would be negative and probably negate uh, that, <clears throat> that pattern. Coming down and doing some testing here around where that breakout level was, even down to 382, maybe the 50, I think would still indicate that um, we're in a bull, bullish phase and we're just doing a correction. But one thing that I did notice on this chart is the market that has been going down the NASDAQ and the S&P. NASDAQ's been the weakest and the S&P uh, follows that and the Dow has been the least weak. Notice how this has just been kind of going, going sideways. So uh, I've got the retracement low to high here and we can see where those uh, retracement ratios are coming in. Again, this this would not be good. So that's the low from May of this year. So again, back to the NASDAQ. So we talked about um, butterfly patterns on here, etc. I am going to, let's see. Well, we know we have the 886 retracement to the upside. So this is the important resistance right now. The first area resistance then, of course, these old highs back in here. But what I want to be watching on the NASDAQ, I'm going to take this fib ladder off right there, is notice how we have this ABCD looking pattern right here off of the butterfly. So we came down, did a retracement up, and uh, it hasn't quite turned around to the upside. We don't know if it will or not. If it does turn back up to the upside, what we want to be watching is how far this retracement goes. Here's resistance right here, just about where the top of that line is because we've got all this support down here. We're about the halfway mark of that uh, candle. If you remember last week, I said, you know, rallies back up halfway into the candle probably will offer shorting opportunities so it's tested up there but it can test it again and so if the market rallies back up it's unable to make a high above this resistance then comes back down and breaks that that's likely to cause a little bit more more selling to come into the market uh, so we're, we're looking at a retracement all the way back from October last year. This big, big, big run here, the 382 is coming back down into this level where the market was really trending to the upside back around this level here. We've got a gap in this area. would be watching this gap first. If that gap fails, meaning it just does not get support, or maybe it comes down, it finds some support, does a rally up, then breaks it. That would just be breaking support. Then we're gonna be looking for the next level to the downside, which I think is gonna be the three, the 382 area. So I do feel that we have some more downside, let some more air out of the tire, so to speak. It's been a huge run to the, to the upside. But on the other hand, that's probably gonna offer good buying opportunities.
Okay, so here's one thing we might want to look for on the long side, and that's gold. This is um, ETF gold, G-O-L-D. An ABCD sell here. Price came down, tested the support areas. And here I've got this drawn in here uh, and has uh, formed ABCD buy and had a bit of a rally up there. Now, it, you never know if this is going to retrace back again to give an opportunity to get in. Uh, if you're a short-term trader, then that trade's over because, look, it's it's already retraced up, you know, 50% of the A to D and, you know, 6.618 uh, of the C to D leg. So that that's not getting in a good place. However, if you feel that gold is going to move higher above these highs, then you might be able to you know, get a little pullback in here and then assess the risk. I would be looking at this low, just below here is the maximum risk on that type of a setup. But the RSI has been showing some strength, walking uphill. It still has some work to do to get above these resistance areas. But I would be keeping an, um, an eye on this symbol and other symbols related in the gold market. So in the beginning of this, this week's video, I talked about the butterfly pattern and how it's a contrarian type of a setup that the sentiment is generally going to be extreme on the opposite direction that, that you're anticipating the pattern to turn. So if we have a, a butterfly pattern that's a sell pattern, it's likely that the market is um, a very happy and that there's uh, greed or extreme greed in the market and that's what we saw you know just up till a couple of weeks ago and now the market has turned and those butterfly patterns are up there that can make it difficult for traders to get in but i think the more you understand about these different little variances and nuances to it the the more it's going to help you to be able to get in the trades when you're supposed to get in them. And they don't work the first time. As I said, sometimes you've got to stick with them. So uh, we talked about NIO and, you know, had said, um, you know, back here, nobody was paying attention with this butterfly buy pattern. Nobody paid attention. It was still pretty bearish and it just was very quiet. But then as the market started to rise, all of a sudden it's showing up on the tops of list of things of the most active and I'm sure chat rooms, you know, had it in there. And then look what happens with it. Now it gets the turn. So it's like, where, where would you rather get in? This is going to offer you the lowest risk, even though it might be the scariest entry. You know, this is often feeling like, um, this is giving you confirmation, but a lot of times that's not going to be the best place to get in. But your risk reward is always going to be the lowest um, with these patterns, and especially when you get good at identifying that whole market structure that you're in. Okay, I just wanted to point that out on Niall because I think I had just put something out on that and then right when it hit this 127 and then it's turned around now to the downside. This may offer another buying opportunity if it comes up, it rallies, comes down, maybe makes an ABCD buy pattern in here. Maybe it needs to go sideways for a little bit. I mean, after all, it did, let's see, 714, it did about 200 and something percent uh, move on it. So that's that's pretty good in a short amount of time in just a couple of months. So, you know, take into consideration the sentiment of the market in your trades. Okay, that's it for this week. Thanks for joining me and uh, have a great weekend. I will see you on our next uh, weekly setups next week.